All right, can I retire at 60 with $500,000 saved for retirement and should I claim social security early? That's what we're gonna look at. We're gonna dive into the software and I'm gonna show you why this couple should claim social security at 62, not delaying their social security and I'll go through the different reasons why that is. Are you ready for that? Because I know I just said something that you don't hear a lot of financial advisors talk about, and that's claiming Social Security early. All right, so here's what we got. We've got Drew and Valerie. Obviously, that's me and my wife. The names have been changed on this couple to protect the innocent. Now, they are both 60 years old. They do live in Florida, so they have a low state and local tax, but they still have federal taxes, so that's something we do need to look at. And they're both retired. So we're already in retirement. Now they came to me after they retired and said, hey, when should we claim social security and are we gonna be okay? Now I was doing a full financial EKG for these individuals. Would have loved for them to come to me before they retired and ask those questions, but it's okay that they came to me afterwards. Hey, we're gonna work wherever you are at. And if you want a financial EKG, in the description below is a link to get in touch with us and we can go through a retirement plan for you that's individualized. Because you can get a retirement plan anywhere. You can get a free plan at Vanguard. You can get a free plan at uh, Fidelity but you can only get a your financial EKG with me. All right, so here we go. So social security benefits. Now for Drew at 62, it's 1,750. For Valerie at 62, it's 2,100. Now she was the primary breadwinner for most of their lives. So let me show you the social security differences here. So for her, her full retirement age is 67 because she was born after the year 1960. The benefit at 67 would be $3,000. For him, it would be $2,500. And you can see how there's a difference and how they grow as we wait. So at 63 for her, it's 2250, 2400, 2600, 2800, 3000. And if you delay even longer, 3240, 3480, and 3720. Now that all looks fine and dandy, but we've got to get to these ages first. And we have to think about where's the income going to come from if we delay Social Security and what are the taxes going to be like on those assets? So for them, they have traditional IRAs, two of them plus the bank. And so if they're gonna delay Social Security, all of their income is gonna come from their IRAs. So does it make sense to delay Social Security and start taking money out of their IRA early? pay the taxes now, there's no penalty, but pay those taxes now to delay Social Security? Or do we delay Social Security now, defer the IRAs, allow those IRAs to continue to grow? What I would like to see is when we get to our mid 70s, our mid 80s, that we still have a nest egg there. We haven't drained it all. And so you've got to look at this on an individualistic approach because when we get to our 70s and 80s, there's going to be long-term care. There's going to be things that we're going to need money for. So if we drain all our assets first to have a larger Social Security benefit, what are we going to do if we have an emergency? So let's talk about that. Let's look at that. So we're going to look at taking Social Security at 62. Now there's no pension benefits. And if you look at assets, you can see they basically have three different assets. Drew has an IRA for $150,000. Valerie has an IRA of 350 and they have a bank account of 15,000. Okay, so they've got $515,000 in total retirement assets. This is our emergency fund, this 15,000, so we're not really counting that in their retirement savings. We're only counting these two IRAs. They're not making any contributions because they're not working. They are retired. They do have a home that is paid for for $400,000. So we've got about $900,000 in total net worth of which 500,000 is being used for retirement income, 15,000 is an emergency fund, and 400,000 is a protected asset. It's a physical asset that we could do a reverse mortgage down the road, we could sell it, you know, rent, whatever. So it's, it's, it's there, it's not necessarily something we wanna do, but it's there if we need to, all right? Now, from a rate of return standpoint, we're gonna look at a 6% rate of return 
on all assets. Oops, missed 6% there. And I can show you if we take it down to 5% and 4%, we might get the end of that in this video. We might not, depending on the length of the video. But what I really want to concentrate on today is Social Security. Now, from an expense standpoint, their expenses are $5,000 per month, and we're going to look at a 3% inflation rate. Okay, so that's $60,000 a year that they need off of their retirement investments or a combination of Social Security and retirement investments. Again, we're talking about taxes and what makes the most sense. So let's go to taxes. So we're going to take Social Security early. So we need to go to that year. I want to show you something. So this is the year 2023. They are 60. We're not taking Social Security yet. So at 60, they've got to take out $50,559 from their assets to pay for everything they need to do, right? And we're looking at this kind of mid-year, so that's why it's $50,000, not the sixty. dollars okay? So it's March. So if we take out the standard deduction of $27,700, that means our taxable income, or our tax is $2,318. That means we're in the 4.57% projected federal tax rates. It's really low. It's, it's really, really good. Now let's go to 2024. Let's go for a whole year of income. So here we go. 64649 Now you might think, what's the extra income? That's inflation and taxes. Okay, remember their expenses are $5,000 a month with inflation. So we've got 64649 came out of our retirement investments that we're hopefully earning 6% a year on. That's what we're projecting. We have a standard deduction of 27.7. That means taxable income is 37,101. So we have our base, base tax, over base, over base. So our federal tax is $4,000, which now puts us at the 6.19. So we've gone two years of taking out $50,000 and $60,000. Now we're going to go into our third year, and now we're going to start taking Social Security. What's that going to do to our taxes? So let's go to 2025. Now look at this. Here's our taxable Social Security, 7073 You might be thinking, Drew, why is it only 7000 taxable? It's because we're using provisional income. Provisional income is taking your investment income, like your IRAs, ordinary income, plus interest, plus half of your Social Security, plus any tax-free interest, that gives your provisional income, and that determines how much of your Social Security is taxable. Well, for them, their provisional income is only causing $7,000 of their Social Security to be taxed. Now, they're taking all of their Social Security, which we did it on the board, so all of their Social Security is $46,200 at 62 but only $7,000 of that $46,200 is being calculated into their taxes. And so we have some taxable withdrawals here. This is just because of inflation and taxes. Here's our standard deduction of $27,700. Now our total tax is $154, which puts us in the 0.53% tax bracket. So we were already in a really low tax bracket but now we're in the 0.53 tax bracket. You following me? Let's go to 2026. But now we're in a zero tax bracket. Look at that, zero. Now why are we in a zero tax bracket? Because we've had social security for the whole year. Now in the last scenario, or I'm sorry, in the last year in 2025, their social security didn't kick on for a couple, couple months. But now we've had a whole year of social security. So again, our taxable social security is 5,373. Our money that we need out of our investments is 18,898 for extra income with inflation and taxes, standard deduction, look at those zeros. So from the year 2026, so from age 63 to age 73, they're pretty much going to be at zero under the current tax code. Now we all know that taxes are going to change in 2027. So let's go to 2027 and let's adjust taxes. So the year 2027, let's do a 25% increase on taxes. We'll save that. So now we've adjusted taxes by 25% for the year 2027. That's back to the Obama era taxes. Because that's what will happen. If the Trump tax code is not extended or, or refined or they change it, it reverts back to the Obama era. All right, so now let's look at can I retire? 
right? We've retired at 60. How long is our money going to last? Because that's really the question we need to know. Are we going to delay Social Security? Are we going to take it early? How long is our money going to last? Now, in their case, here, let's look at this. So we're at age 60. We have no pension and no Social Security. Remember, we're, we're, we're going to take it early, but we don't have anything else between those early years. So our assets go from 515 down to 455 because we're having to use that for retirement income. But then at age 62, our Social Security kicks on, which means our expenses at 5,423 subtracted from our Social Security means we only need $1,500 a month. Now that does increase with inflation and eventually at 92, we're out of spendable assets but we do have this house. So it's not a bad scenario, right? We could reverse mortgage the house, we could sell it. So taking Social Security early for them made the most sense tax-wise and it got them into their early 90s retiring at 60 with $500,000. Now, let's go back, because I hear a lot of you talking about it. Should they delay Social Security? Let's look at it. Let's go back to the calculator Let's put them at 67, save that, and let's just look at it. Let's go to taxes. Let's change the brackets back down. Oh, we're gonna increase in 2027, so let's keep that. So let's go to 2024, that's a full year. So this is not gonna change, there's 6.19. 2025, 6.49, so we're paying taxes. Remember at age 62, we weren't paying any taxes taking Social Security early. Here, we're still paying taxes. Now, it's just a little bit. $4,000 here, $4,000 there. Here's our increase, 8.55. Now we're paying about $6,200. But let's go to retirement, see what that does. Oh, wow, look at this. Now, we're gonna delay Social Security to 67, but look what it does. We're out of money at 86. Remember, at 62, we were out at 92. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. Now, how long did we delay Social Security? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. By delaying Social Security seven years, we ran out of income seven years earlier than we did claiming Social Security at 62. Now, does this work for everybody? Is this your situation? Should you run out and claim Social Security at 62? I don't know. You need to contact me. We need to do a Social Security optimization schedule. We need to do a retirement EKG. We need to do a financial EKG to make sure you can get to retirement, through retirement, protect your ability to stay in retirement. But I wanted to show you why for them it made sense to collect early, to save on taxes, to look, use that retirement income for those first two years, take that Social Security. I'm not worried about RMDs as much because again, showing it in the software with increased taxes, they're out at 92 years old. So if the tax code stays where it's at or increases, they're gonna be okay. And so it just, want you, when you're running your financial EKG, it has to be based on you, all right? Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. God bless, bye-bye. Can I retire at 62 with $595,000 saved for retirement? Now, we're moving on to the next scenario. We just looked at, can I retire at 60 with $500,000 saved for retirement? And that did not work. We are out of money at 77 years old. So now, the only factor that Samantha, so this is Sam, that she can control is working longer and saving more for retirement. She can't control what the market does. She can't control inflation. Her expenses are rock bottom. So we have to work a little longer. We need to continue to delay social security and we need to save more for retirement. So now we're 62 years old 
and we have 594,989,000 ,000 saved for retirement. In the last scenario, she was 60 years old with $512,000 saved for retirement. So she's worked, she's worked two more years, she's gotten a 401k match, she's put her contribution in, and she's got a market return of 6%. We're just doing a easy projection. So we have 594,000 saved now at 62. Her, her expenses were $3,500 at 60. Well, it's been two years. So her expenses have inflated, right, over those last two years by 3%. So her new expenses are 3,750. So these are her expenses and they do have a 3% inflation rate on them. Meaning we're gonna look at this on a monthly basis. Inflation for the year is 3% and we break that down monthly, okay? Now, she's 62, we're gonna wait till 67 to take Social Security. So we've got five years that we're gonna take 3750 out of our 595,000 that we've saved for retirement. Now, there's 6% is what we're gonna assume the rate of return is on her investments. Keep in mind, I always stress this because I always get a comment about it. 6% is the long-term average that we're looking at for a projection. We're not looking at year 2022. We're not looking at year 2023 or year 2021. We're not pulling out a single year and making a comment like, well, she can't earn 6% in 2022. I know that. What I'm looking at is long-term, she's going to average 6% because the market has averaged 8% over the last 50 years. So we're gonna make it more conservative because she's in retirement. When you move into retirement, it's so important that you adjust your investments for retirement. I'm 37 years old. You don't wanna be investing like me at 55, 60, 65 if you're retired. You need to be more conservative. You need to be more income-minded. It's not about what you make, but it's about what you keep. And if you're at the water cooler, if you're at the golf course, if you're at the pool and everybody's talking about their stock market gains and they're making 10, 15, 20%, they're not talking about their losses. And it's not about them, it's about you in retirement. So from 62 to 67, she's gonna take out $3,750 per month, okay? With inflation of 3%. At the end of that five years, she would have $450,598, okay? So we've taken out $140,000 for income. The money's still earning 6%, but we're net less $140,000. Now at 67, our expenses have grown to $4,399 because of inflation. So there's our expenses now. Okay, so they've grown because of inflation. We're going to get Social Security of $3,000. So that's our Social Security. So we need about $1,400 per month from our investments. Okay, so $1,400 is what we're going to need to take out. We're still going to assume a 6% rate of return. So 67, and I want to go, okay, now that we're on Social Security, how long is this going to last? And basically, we're at zero at 85. So if we retire at 62 with $595,000 saved in our retirement savings, our 401ks, IRAs, whatever, earning 6%, our expenses are inflated, we're basically out of money at 85 years old. And so that's getting closer to where we want to be. I feel okay. Mortality rates for females are at 86, so we're about a year off. Doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room for emergencies or healthcare costs or anything like that. So I would like to push this even farther. So we need to make some adjustments again. The only adjustment that we can control is working longer and saving more.
Can you retire on less than $500,000 in retirement savings? Well, new data shows that 38% of individuals believe they can retire on $500,000 in retirement savings or less. So let's look at it on the board to see if the math works out and you can retire on $500,000 in retirement savings or less. First, how do we determine how much we need in retirement? Well, for this scenario and for this example, we've got to use some national averages. So the first thing I'm going to use is a retirement age of 55. I've get a lot of individuals asking, can I retire at 55? Or I want to retire early at 55. So we're going to use 55 as the age of retirement. We're going to use the average social security check, which is $1,542. Now that is the average for everyone in America. And we're going to use three different ways to figure out how much retirement income we're going to need off of that $500,000 in retirement assets. So let's do that first. So the first rule we're going to look at to get retirement income off of the $500,000 to determine if $500,000 is enough to retire is the 4% rule. Now the 4% rule has been around for a long time and it simply says this, take 4% off of the total value of your retirement savings plus inflation and your money will last for 30 years. So on $500,000, that's $20,000 a year plus inflation. Now we're going to use 3% as an inflation rate. The 108 year average is 3.24. Might be higher now and it might be less in the future. So that's why we're going to use an average of 3%. Now the second way you can determine how much retirement income you can withdraw off of your retirement assets is the replacement ratio. The replacement ratio simply says this, take 80% of your current annual income and that is how much you'll need in retirement plus inflation. So the average income today in America is $55,000. So 80% of $55,000 is $44,000. So we will be taking $44,000 annually off of $500,000 in retirement assets to see how long that's going to last. And $44,000 is 8.8%. That's a huge withdrawal rate when it comes to pulling money out of your retirement investments. And the third retirement rule we're going to use to determine how much income we're going to need off our investments is new data that has updated the replacement ratio. Remember the replacement ratio is 80%. New data shows us 60% is the new replacement ratio. So 60% of $55,000 is $33,000 that you'll need every year off of your retirement investments plus inflation. That's a 6.6% .6 withdrawal rate coming off of your retirement investments. It's a little better than 8.8%, but not where I want it. All right, so these are our three scenarios. Remember, 4% rule, 80% replacement, and 60% replacement of $55,000 in retirement income. So $500,000 in retirement assets, $1,667 is our expenses broken down on a monthly basis. So we're taking that retirement income on a monthly basis. The $500,000 in retirement investments is still invested in the market. So we're going to assume a 6% rate of return. Now the stock market, the S&P 500 has averaged 10% since 1950, 8% with inflation. And if you go back to 1900, the market's averaged right about 6.5%. So I feel really comfortable doing projections at 6%. 3% is our inflation rate, and we're going to start Social Security of $1,542 at 67. So in this scenario, $500,000 in assets, taking $1,667 per month plus inflation over the next 30 years, at age 100, retiring at 55, this person would have $1.3 million in retirement savings. So the first example, can I retire with five $500,000 in retirement savings. Yeah, you can, but you got to have very, very low 
expenses. Now, the second scenario, which is the 80% replacement rule. Remember, $500,000 in retirement assets. We need $44,000 in retirement income on an annual basis. So that's $3,667 per month. 6% is our rate of return. 3% is our inflation rate. We're Excuse me, we're taking Social Security of $1,542 at 67. That goes from 500,000 to zero at 67. So from 55 to 67, 12 years, you're out of money doing the 80% replacement rule. So if you came to me and said, hey, can I retire at 55 with $500,000 in retirement savings and I need $44,000 a year off of my money, I would say, no, it doesn't make sense. We need to look at some other factors and other ways that you can save more, retire later, or maximize your social security. Now, scenario number three, 60% replacement rate off of 55,000, so that means we need $33,000 annually, broken down on a monthly basis, that's 2750 per month in retirement income. Everything else is still the same. 6% rate of return on our retirement investments, 3% inflation, and we're taking Social Security of 1542 at 67. This person is out at 75, so it's a little better. It's 20 years, 55 to 75. So again, there's other factors that we need to look at. So the question becomes, how much do I need to retire? Well, that's totally dependent on you. And if you want me to do a financial EKG for you to determine if you have enough to retire, in the comment section below and also in the description is how you get in touch with me. And there's a free download called the Checklist to Retirement. Download that. See if you are on track for retirement. And also, if you want to touch base with me, there's a box there that allows you to do that. We can get in contact and we can go through whether you have saved enough for retirement to get you to retirement, through retirement, and protect your ability to stay in retirement. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you watch all the catalog of videos that are going to help you on your retirement journey. God bless. Bye-bye. All right, can I retire at 62 with $150,000 saved for retirement as a single individual? Now, you have some unique circumstances when you're married and then when you're single in retirement, but there are some challenges that you have as a single individual that married individuals and families don't have, especially in retirement. The first challenge is that your retirement savings is on me, myself, and I, meaning you are the sole saver the sole contributor, the sole investor in your retirement savings. The second challenge that you have as a single individual in retirement is that you only get one social security, one pension, one set of investment accounts to pull out retirement income. So what we want to do today is address a few of those challenges and see if I can retire at 62 with $150,000 saved for retirement. So here's our assumptions. We're age 62. Our Social Security is $1,800 a month. That's the average Social Security. We're looking at retirement savings of $150,000 a year, and our expenses are $40,000 a year. Now, here's how I got that. The U.S. Census Bureau says that the average person in their 60s has $50,000 in expenses. I'm assuming that that's a married couple. From my experience, single individuals don't have $50,000 in expenses in retirement unless they live in higher cost states. Think California, New York, Massachusetts, things like that. So I backed off by about $10,000. So I went to $40,000 in expenses. Now this could be lower, this could be higher. I just want to show you a simple explanation. So 62, we're going to take a couple assumptions. We're going to earn 6% a year in the market and we're going to have 3% inflation. Okay, so our rate of return is going to be 6%. Our inflation is going to be 3%. Now, our expenses are going to start at $3,333 per month. And our Social Security is going to be $1,800 a month. So that means out of our retirement investments, we need $1,614 per month. So this is what our expenses are 
that we need to live. Social Security, that's a guaranteed income, right? Backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Whatever that means to you, okay? Which means we need to pull out of our retirement investments $1,614. This is gross. We're looking at this as a gross figure. This is all pre-tax. So at 72, we have zero dollars. We're out of money. So it doesn't work. $40,000 in expenses, $150,000 in retirement savings, average Social Security, it doesn't work. Obviously, if Social Security is higher, or if you have more retirement savings, it might work. But in this case, it doesn't work. And I'm actually using a rate of return that is a lot higher than what I see normally for individuals in their 60s. A lot of times when I do investment analysis for clients, when I'm looking at their investment portfolio, they're asking me, hey, would you help me with manage my retirement assets? Um, a lot of times their rate of return comes in about four and a half, five percent And so I'm looking at this as a little bit higher. Now it's 2% behind what the market has averaged for the last 50 years. It's just not a good scenario. It doesn't work. So what can we control? And what can we not control? I can't control the market. I can't control inflation. But what we can control is how much we need in retirement expenses, right? How much we need in retirement income. And we can control maybe working a little bit longer. Now, I don't want to do the working a little bit longer scenario. I just want to look at the expense scenario. So let's go over here. $150,000. We're going to use the same rates of return, 6%, 3%. Let's draw a line here so we don't get confused. Now we're going to drop our expenses to $2,500 a month. So we were at $3,333. Now we're dropping it down to $2,500 a month. Now keep in mind, you've really got to go through your budget with a fine tooth comb. What I like to do for my clients when we're working through a your financial EKG for someone, I actually send them an advanced expense plan. And if you've gone through an advanced expense plan with me, leave in the comments how beneficial that was to you. I had a client just email me today and say, hey Drew, that was so eye-opening actually going through our expenses. Now I'm not trying to tell you you need to have a budget. I'm not trying to tell you to be you know, a Dave Ramsey person. I like Dave Ramsey. What I'm trying to say is we just need to get our spending down on paper so that we can know what we need from our retirement investments in order to retire. We don't want to just walk blindly into retirement um, hoping rainbows, unicorns, and pixie dust is going to get us through. We need to have a plan. You've never driven somewhere on vacation. You can't go from Tampa, Florida to Panama City Beach, Florida, which is about six hours away. You can't go there without a map. Like you could say, oh, I'm going to drive north and then I'm going to turn left and, and I'm going to go towards Louisiana and I'll get to Panama City. Maybe but I would rather have a map. I'd rather say, okay, hey, we're going to take US-19. That's going to go along the coast, or I'm going to go up 75, hit I-10, and go over. We want to have a map. We want to know where we're going. So Social Security, $1,800 a month. Okay, This is our expenses monthly, which means we need $761 off of our investments, which at 72 puts it at $122,215. So we've gone from $150 to $122 by lowering expenses. Okay? I think you can see where this is going. $122. Let's go to $82. Same rates of return. Same inflation assumption. Our expenses have now gone to $3,533 because of inflation. Social Security is 2322 right? That's the COLA increase there. Okay, that's 2.5% on Social Security, which means we need $1,211 off our investments, which we're out at zero. Just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Unfortunately, it does not work. So what can we do? A couple things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna rip off the Band-Aid first. We work longer. We work longer, so we increase our retirement savings. We continue getting the contribution. We continue getting the match from our company. We work a little bit longer. It doesn't have to be full-time. Maybe you work part-time. Again, we just talked about this with the married scenario. If $761 a month is what you need in retirement income, and you are dead set on quitting that job because you are stressed out beyond belief, 
We got to earn $761 from somewhere to make this last. What do you love to do? What do you enjoy? Go do that, right? Maybe you go work at a golf course because you love to golf. You get paid to work at a golf course and you get free golf. It's a pretty good deal. I got a lot of clients that do that. I love baseball. I go to the Tampa Bay Rays games all the time. I talk to the ushers because they're all like in their 60s and 70s. I say, listen, I want to be you one day. I want to retire. I want to come to the Trop Tropicana Field, whatever they call it at that time, and I want to watch free baseball and help people find their seats and watch kids enjoy baseball and sing the seventh inning stretch every year. That's what I want to do. That would be a dream for me. That's awesome. So maybe we work longer. Another thing we do, if we work longer, we delay Social Security. And by delaying Social Security, we're increasing our guaranteed income because that's what we need. It's a pension. You're single, me, myself, and I. So if we can increase our Social Security, we can increase our guaranteed income and we can increase the longevity of our assets. Keep in mind, these two scenarios are at zero, but Social Security still pays. Social Security still pays. So if Social Security is going to continue to pay even when we're out, Maybe we should try to delay it as long as possible, okay? Those are the things we need to do. Now you have to decide what you want to do, all right? Now listen, if you want an EKG, you want to talk to me, go to the description below. would be honored to help you. When you set an appointment with our firm, you talk to me. You don't talk to somebody else. You get me, and we're going to go through your retirement. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.